What's up guys, welcome back to The Glove Drop. Last night, the New York Rangers were back on Garden Ice for an original six matchup against the Detroit Red Wings. The Rangers were coming in off of a really embarrassing, horrible nightmare of a game on Saturday night against Minnesota where the Rangers blew a 3-0 lead and ended up losing 5-4 in a shootout. The Detroit Red Wings, on the other hand, were coming in off of a big win over Boston. Boston is, of course, leading the entire league, so huge dub for the Red Wings. And now they're going to face each other. The Rangers are still without Adam Fox, who is on LTIR for injuries sustained during the game versus Carolina. They were also without Philip Edel and Igor Shosturkin, who were both battling minor injuries as well. They do have back Barclay Goudreau. He had gone home for a bit to be there for the birth of his first child. So congratulations, but he's back now too. So that's awesome. Peter LaViolette did do a little bit of shifting when it comes down to the lines. Capococco is no longer on that top line with Savannah Jed and Kreider. He decided to put Blake Wheeler there, but LaViolette said that was not a shot at Capococco. He just wanted to mix things up a little bit, see if they could get anything going, and so Kako has moved down to the third line. So getting right into the game, first period, the Rangers come out, ton of momentum, they're looking great. It's reminiscent of the first five minutes of the Minnesota game. A minute and 45 seconds in to this first period, Vinny Trocek gets his second goal of the season. On the transition now is a little bit of speed. And, and, and again, the position of Husserl, he left his angle. He didn't... Now, I friggin' love this goal. The goal is taken from wide out. And the reason that Trocek was able to get it past Billy Husso, not because he had a great shot, which, yeah, he did, but Alexi Lafreniere was there on the play and he kept moving forward. So we've got Vinny Trocek coming up on the right side and then you've got Alexi Lafreniere coming up on the left. This causes Husso to kind of cheat a little bit on the angle. So he's got his weight on his left foot so that if Trocek does go for the pass, he'll be able to get over to the other side and block out Lafreniere. He doesn't go for the pass, he goes for the shot. And that cheating the angle really kind of screwed Billy Husso over because he was not able to make that save. The Rangers are up 1-0 real quick. So I'm excited, but not too excited because I don't want things to happen like they did in Minnesota. Five minutes in, the Rangers get called on a penalty. Now this, to me, is horrifying because what happened in the Minnesota game, there was three in a row, basically back-to-back-to-back -to -back -to -back penalties. Yes, the Rangers kill it off. But gotta watch these friggin' penalties because it's gonna come around eventually. It'll come around and bite you in the ass. Rangers kill off the penalty and they maintain the pressure with over halfway through the first period. They're out shooting the Red Wings 12 to 1. Second period starts and what do you know? 30 seconds in, the Rangers again are on the penalty kill and it's starting to piss me off. I'll give the Rangers credit though because during this penalty kill, not only did they just completely stuff the Red Wings, they had the better of the scoring opportunities. Finally back in even strength and the Rangers are still running, running the show. They've been able to bounce back and keep that momentum going, but Alex Dabrinkit did manage to break through and he's having a hell of a season already. He's one of the top scorers in the league. He's putting up goal after goal after goal. Now he manages to get through and get a shot off. Jonathan Quick made an absolutely beautiful save. And here's when it started getting really fun for me because 12 minutes and 41 seconds left in that second period, the Rangers finally go on their first power play of the game. It was a great face-off win and the puck manages to get over to Eric Gustafson and he puts it out front and guess what? Who else would be standing in front of the net to deflect it but Chris M.F. Kreider. Right there. And you can see he gets a lot on that little heel to toe saucer that's off. Beautiful tip there by Kreider. The Rangers go up 2-0 off of yet another power play goal right in front of the net from Kreider. And, and, the secondary assist goes to none other than Artemi Panarin. This extends Panarin's point streak to 12 games. He has had a point in all 12 games this season. The streak continues. Panarin's redemption season, thank God. The Rangers are up 2-0 and almost immediately they go back on the power play. Detroit is starting to pull the Rangers bullshit with all the penalties. And in this instance, Sider and Wallman, two players for Detroit, they get kind of hung up. There was a bit of a confusion on the side of the net. They're a little wrapped up in each other and they lose control of the puck. Zibanejad is able to recover it and he sails one over to a wide open Vinny Trocek right in front of the net. Husso did not stand a chance. He gets dunked on. You do that, now you're, now you're backwards and, and you're, you see that how quickly that pass goes across to a right hand shot. Zibanejad looks like he's going to play it one way. He fires it to the higher. And Vinny Trocek gets his second goal of the night. Rangers are up 3-0 in a matter of 45 seconds. All of the momentum is with the Rangers at this point, and they are out shooting 
the Detroit Red Wings 24 to 8 at the halfway point in the game. The Rangers once again make an entrance into the Detroit zone and they get two more players wrapped up behind the net. I see we're seeing this for the second time. A couple of Red Wing guys are trapped up behind, leaving one Ranger player wide open in front of the net. Poor Billy Husso is literally screwed in this instance because guess who is left wide open in front of the net? It's Artemi Panarin, and he's going to score. Rangers have been better in this game at that. Sustained pressure, ozone, ozone pressure, and then, a, and then at least one or two. Just like that, it's a 4-0 game. This second period is looking just as nice and beautiful as those few games where we had hell of a second period going when it was on the West Coast. Remember that? It was a great time. So it's starting to look like those kinds of second periods. Detroit rallies back. They really are trying to get anything going. They managed to get a glimpse of offensive play, but once again, they're shut down by Jonathan Quick. Again, he's not having to do that much up until this point, but when he does, man, Jonathan Quick is looking great. And with the save by Jonathan Quick, all hopes and dreams of that offensive push by the Detroit Red Wings is shut down and the Rangers head back up the ice they are like a freight train up the ice. And then we see Zach Jones. Now, Zach Jones is a defenseman that came up, and he's gotten this opportunity due to the Fox injury, and he's making the most out of this opportunity. He takes a shot from way out. Will Cooley pulls a Kreider move, deflects the puck. The, the patience go by Jones before that was incredible. The Rangers are up 5-0. Zach Jones gets his first point of the season, and great for him. It's nice to see these players that are really rallying for a chance, do something with the chance when they get it. And after an absolutely beautiful 20 minutes of hockey, the Rangers head into the second intermission up 5-0. The Rangers will be starting the third period back on the penalty kill because of, I'm gonna call it a questionable tripping call on Keandre Miller with just a few seconds left in the second. So third period starts, Rangers are on the penalty kill. And once again, the Rangers come out of that penalty kill having had the better of the scoring chances. But here's where I'm getting really started to get pissed off, like big time. These penalties need to stop. I don't care how many awesome scoring chances you have when you're a man down. You shouldn't be a man down this often anyway, but what do the Rangers do again? They, they're back on the PK. But let's not take my advice, Rangers, because with 51 seconds left in that penalty kill, there is another penalty called. Keandre Miller gets a delay of game penalty, so for 51 seconds, it's gonna be three on five play, and the Rangers are gonna have to figure something out real quick. And they manage to kill it off, which is almost as embarrassing for the Detroit Red Wings as David Perron's tinted visor in all of the rush to get the players back on the ice for the New York Rangers. And in the moments of excitement of the Rangers for killing off that three, three on five penalty, Detroit manages to get an opportunity and they deliver. Michael Rasmussen gets one past Jonathan Quick and within 20 seconds, Klim Costin gets one past Quick again. It is now a 5-2 game. So those goals were not scored when Detroit was on the power play. They were scored almost immediately after the fact, which just goes to show that the momentum is going to change. And the hype that the Rangers were feeling in the moment for having gotten off of that 3-5 play without them scoring kind of took over. And, and the opportunity was there and Detroit did everything that they could and made it a two-goal opportunity. Not to mention that Detroit is a proven comeback team. Not only are they top in the league for goals scored, they had a huge comeback against the New York Islanders and a huge comeback against the Boston Bruins. And I'm starting to get a little upset. And at this point, I guess the Rangers have completely checked out. It's at home. They were up 5-0, getting really relaxed. Home ice, going to be really relaxed. And Andrew Kopp gets one more past Jonathan Quick. It is now a 5-3 game. Not to mention the fact that the assist, the point for the assist on that goes to Billy Husso. And that's his first point ever. So it is now a 5-3 game with three and a half minutes left. Billy Husso takes his point and he bounces. With three and a half minutes left, Detroit has an empty net. The Rangers hold the pressure on and despite a few kind of attempts, I mean, it kind of looked like they were trying to get it in the empty net. They did go wide a few times. Time does run out and the Rangers walk away with a 5-3 lead after a pretty good attempt to, to come back by Detroit. So takeaways from this game, the first and the second period, fantastic, love it, love to see it. Although the third period, way too relaxed. It, you can't back off that much. You can back off a little, maybe, but you could see just how quickly those goals can get scored and just how quickly it can go from 5-0 to 5-3. 
Other than that, the only other complaint that I really have from this game is just the penalties. Could you guess? Could you guess that that's what was going to be upsetting me? Because the penalties, constant, constant penalties. I don't care how good your PK is. Going on that much is going to eventually get you. And we saw it become a problem. Last night's game did wrap up with the New York Rangers out shooting Detroit 32 to 28. They did go two for three on the power play and six for six on the penalty kill. Six, yeah, I know, six. Gustafson, Kreider, Panarin, and Trocek all racked up two points each, and the Rangers are now 9-2-1 after 12 games played. That is first in the Metropolitan Division. Not that that really matters right now. It's still early, but still first place for now. The Rangers are back on Garden Ice on Thursday to take on Minnesota and hopefully redeem themselves from that horrible game that we all had to sit through. So... That is all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for coming through. If you are new here, make sure you hit that subscribe button so that you don't miss any of these videos. I have post-game videos that go up after every game. Let me know what you think about last night's game in the comments. Do you think that during the third period it was just because they backed off or do you think that they just forgot how to play in the third period? You let me know. If you want more of The Glove Drop, you can check me out on Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter at The Glove Drop. I'll put it here. And I will see you guys all in the next one. In the meantime, please stop taking penalties. I'm going to write them a letter.